Hi, I'm Robert Horton. I'm a member of the National Society of Film Critics, and I'm the programmer historian in residence at the nonprofit Scarecrow Video in Seattle. In 2021, I will have the pleasure of once again leading Scarecrow Academy, an online discussion series about film presented by Scarecrow. Our late winter, early spring semester, if we may call it that, is called The Art in Noir, Film Noir and the Director. And we're going to be looking at some of the absolute classics of the film noir era, discussing them with an emphasis on the art of the director. The series is free and will take place via Zoom on Saturday afternoons at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Beginning February 13th, you can go to the Scarecrow Academy page and find out how to register. You may be there already watching this. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, somewhere around my talking head, you will see a, a place where you can click and, and link and register for the series. Scarecrow will send you an email back for with a confirmation, tell you how to sign up for our Zoom meeting. Our first film, which I will introduce a little bit at this moment, is Double Indemnity, directed by Billy Wilder from 1944. Double Indemnity is not the first film uh, of the film noir cycle, but it is a very early one and it helps uh, set up many of the styles and themes that were going to come as film noir developed. So th since this is our first week, uh, we should probably pause to define film noir. People really love to define film noir endlessly. Uh, although this form has been so talked about and has become so popular uh, in the last couple of decades that it almost needs no introduction. Still, for the uninitiated, here are a few basics. A lot of people agree that film noir has its roots in the hard-boiled pulp fiction kind of American writing of the 1920s and 1930s. It's often associated with writers like James M. Cain, Dashiell Hammett, uh, a little bit later Raymond Chandler. The prime period of film noir lasted from World War II until the late, late 50s, mid 50s. Our series is going to end with Kiss Me Deadly, which came out in 1955. A lot of people like to round off the first cycle of film noir with Orson Welles' 1958 film Touch of Evil. Sometime in that ballpark it ends. The form has a very consistent style marked by low-key lighting, complicated shadows, trench coats and cigarette smoke and an emphasis on the urban jungle, except when it's not in the urban jungle, which is kind of interesting. We'll have a couple of examples of that. That style took a great deal of stuff from the work of the emigre European directors who had flooded Hollywood in the 1930s, especially the Germans. And the form also has some consistent themes, many of which have to do with conniving women and gullible men, and sometimes the other way around who get mixed up in murder invariably. Themes that are often thought to be associated with the anxieties of post-World War II America with a lot of traumatized men coming home from the war, women having become independent during the war and, and are sometimes unrecognizable from what they'd been five or six years earlier. We might also wonder, given you know the, the film noir cycle started during World War II, whether some of these themes are actually pretty eternal when it comes to male-female anxiety. Yeah, I think it would be good to challenge some of the uh, conventional wisdom around film noir as we go through our discussion series here. There is a fatalism and a cynicism in film noir that I think is one reason that the films have appealed to later generations. Maybe the post-war you know, post boom in America was unprecedented and will probably never be equaled. And yet these films seem to be delivering some kind of counter narrative, something much more skeptical in nature about those times. So Double Indemnity, this was uh, such a pessimistic property that Billy Wilder had a hard time convincing his usual writing part partner, Charles Brackett, to collaborate with him. Charles Brackett was a very civilized New Yorker magazine sort of writer. He was horrified by the sordid subject matter of uh, James M. Cain's source novel which was originally published in 1936 in, as a magazine serial. So he opted out and, and Wilder collaborated with Raymond Chandler, one of America's greatest detective novelists. And Wilder and Chandler actually did not get along that well personally, but they, they came up with this absolutely crackling screenplay that did um, depart significantly from Kane's novel in some ways that we will surely talk about. 
I will also talk a little bit about Wilder um, during our meeting. His, his history here will just say that he was part of that great exodus from Europe that happened during the 1930s. He was a very successful screenwriter by the time of the, the, the decade ended in, in Hollywood. And Double Indemnity is his third film as a Hollywood director. He had made his debut in Hollywood directing in 1942. I think you'll see his touch all the way down the line in this movie the incredibly witty dialogue and the sense of structure in a film. The choice of uh, Miklos Rosa, the Hungarian composer, to give the movie its very ominous musical score. The taste for Americana, especially, that encompasses cheap supermarkets and bowling alleys and people who are just catching their get-rich-quick schemes. And also the casting of the film is, is interesting in a way that's typical with Wilder, including super good guy Fred McMurray cast as this smarmy insurance salesman who, who takes one look at uh, Barbara Sandwick's anklet and uh, decides he's ready to commit murder. Wilder spent many years pushing against the boundaries of the production code in Hollywood, and this film is no exception. It's got a movie in which two glamorous movie stars are absolute stone cold killers, and they're the leads in this film. He really pressed his luck with this, but it worked. Double Indemnity was a popular success, got seven Oscar nominations, and as we said, it did pave the way for the noir styles that were about to come. I have to say that Wilder is one of my favorite directors, and I once had the pleasure of putting together a book-length collection of interviews that he'd done throughout his career. It was really fun because he's an incredible wit and rock on tour. Wish I had a copy of that book so I could hold it up and and show it to you. Oh wait, I do have a copy of the book. Uh, here it is, uh, and I may dip into this uh, during our our session for a few quotes or stories or anecdotes or something like that. But uh, he is celebrated for his writing and and for his wit. I want to make a case that he's maybe underrated as a as a director. I think he's a very dynamic, very insightful director. So we will talk about the way things look in his films, the mood, the momentum of them. We'll, you, we'll trace some of those directing styles, we'll talk about film noir in general, and we will immerse ourselves in the nocturnal funk of this movie because, you know, Charles Brackett was right. Uh, this is a sordid affair, uh, this film. So be advised and join us at Scarecrow Academy at 2 p.m. Pacific time on Saturday, February 13th, as we take a detailed look at Billy Wilder's Double Indemnity.